Did you know that the richest man who has ever lived was African? Well, let me introduce to you Mansa Musa, the richest man who has ever lived. Mansa Musa means leader Moses or King Moses. Moses is a prophet in all three of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. The Arabic pronunciation, Mansa Musa, is a popular Muslim name. Mansa Musa was the brother of Mansa Abu Qari and inherited the throne in 1324 in his brother's absence whilst he travelled westwardly towards America. African historian Robin Walker describes Mansa Musa as one of the most colourful West African personalities in history. Mansa Musa completed Hajj, an Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca, with 60,000 men, caravans of gold and 12,000 slaves, 500 in front of each horse, each carrying a golden shaft which weighed 3 kilograms. Observers described his entourage as a city moving through the desert. Mansa Musa's net worth was equivalent to over $400 billion. To put this into perspective, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, his net worth is less than half of that, even though he's the richest man living today. Most of Mansa Musa's wealth came from gold and salt. Musa was a devout Muslim and his pilgrimage to Mecca made him well known across, across Northern Africa and the Middle East. To Musa, Islam was an entry into the cultured world of the Eastern Mediterranean. He would spend much time fostering the growth of the religion within the empire of Mali. Whilst in Egypt, on his way to Mecca, Mansa Musa spent so much gold that he crashed the, in the gold economy of Egypt. It would take decades for their gold economy to recover, but the people of Cairo would speak of his name for even longer after that. Because of his nature of giving, Musa's massive spending and generous donations created a massive 10-year gold recession in the cities of Cairo, Medina and Mecca. The sudden influx of gold devalued the metal significantly. Prices of goods and wares became greatly inflated. This mistake became apparent to Musa and on his way back from Mecca, he borrowed all of the gold he could carry from moneylenders in Cairo at high interest. This is the only time recorded in history that one man directly controlled the price of gold in the Mediterranean. Some historians who believe uh, that Hajj was less out of, so Hajj the pilgrimage to Mecca was less out of religious devotion than to garner international attention to the flourishing state of Mali. The creation of, so it was basically a, a bit of an attention seeker. He wanted to bring more attention to Mali to bring more commerce or more advantage. The creation of a recession of that magnitude could have been pur purposeful. So he could have crashed the gold price on purpose. After all, Cairo was the leading gold market at the time where people went to purchase gold in large amounts. In order to relocate these markets to Timbuktu or to Gao, Musa, Mansa Musa, would have to first affect Cairo's gold economy. Musa made a major point of showing off his nation's wealth. His goal was to create a ripple and he succeeded greatly in this, so much so that he lands himself and Mali on the Catalan Atlas of 1375. So what we're seeing here is potentially an individual who wants to, be, to deal more in gold. So he might have strategically traveled to Egypt, garnered a lot of attention, crashed their gold economy to make it more appealing to do business in Mali instead. He gave out so much Malian gold along the way that jellies, i.e. the griots, don't like to praise him in their songs because they think he wasted local resources outside the empire. Uh, this, is, this is from a quote from a journalist. The griots are basically a dynasty of storytellers or a dynasty of historians, uh, many who come from Mali and they use instruments such as drums and the kora to use poetry and to use songs to, in a beautiful fashion, tell the story of the certain significant individuals that have preceded them. Contemporary accounts of Musa's wealth are so breathless um, that it is almost impossible to get a sense 
of just how wealthy and powerful he truly was. This, but this is what Rudolf Butch Ware, associate professor of the history of University of California, told the BBC. Matsumusa returned from Mecca with several Islamic scholars, including direct descendants of the Prophet Muhammad and an Andalusian poet and architect by the name of Abu Ishaq S. Sahili, who is widely credited with designing the famous, uh, I'm, going to I'm going to attempt to say this, uh, Dijin Geber Mosque. My task to you, I've got a few tasks for you. First of all, why would spending so, why would spending more gold crash the value of gold? Explore the concept of supply and demand and inflation under the guidance of your teacher. My second task to you is that Mansa Musa and Jeff Bezos had amounted more wealth than many countries. This led to the development of a middle class, i.e. more people became wealthy. But this also means that they're hoarding more wealth which could help other people. I want you to explore the pros and cons of allowing people, especially a very small minority of people, to amount huge wealth versus forcing wealthy people to share their wealth more via taxation, i.e. do you reduce taxes to give people the motivation to accrue more wealth or do you increase taxation so that those who are rich can give more of their wealth to the state which can then be divided amongst the people who need it most. Explore these concepts please under the guidance of your teacher and whenever you're ready we can continue on to the next part of the presentation.